Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rum on a Couch video number 70. Dave here from Manchester Rum Festival and I have to apologise, it's been a fair few weeks since the last Rum on a Couch episode and the main reason why, I actually contracted Covid. Uh, I lost my taste and smell and it's quite a, it's, it's, it's a vital component for these Rum on a Couch episodes. As you know, I like to taste, I like to smell and I couldn't do it. So luckily they have come back, um, fingers crossed, as strong as ever. And to be fair, I suppose during all that, I've been able to refocus obviously on Manchester Rum Festival itself. It is going to happen on August 28th this year. If you hadn't already got your tickets, there are only a handful left. There will be another video uh, going live in the next couple of days, which will give you a good idea what Rumfest is going to be all about. If you're on the fence, God forbid. Um, but this episode is all about a Antiguan rum, which is English Harbour. Actually, one of the very first uh, rums I experienced that wasn't from an island that was more, in my mind, traditional for rum. You know, it wasn't a Jamaican, it wasn't a St. Lucian, it wasn't a Barbadian or a Cuban. Antigua is a little bit on the smaller side in regards to its production and to be fair the brands that are available here in the UK. I already have the English Harbour 10 year but this is their sherry cask finish and also their port cask finish. Now these two bottles and I'm sure the 10 year as well will be available at Manchester Rum Festival because Roger who was a fantastic importer for this great brand, uh, will be in Manchester for the very first time. So this is a really cool example of a brand that's coming up to Manchester to offer you something a little bit new, a little bit different, and maybe your new favourite as well. But I'm conscious of time because it's been a while and I can chat, as I'm sure a lot of people uh, know by now. Um, they've come in these beautiful looking boxes as well so it's a great little present idea christmas is on its way um but i'm gonna start with i'm gonna start start, yeah, start with the sherry cask now let's have a look at the bottle here antiguan rum sherry cask finished batch number two as well that's interesting so we have a small batch non-chill filtered a limited release of five-year-old rum finished in sherry cask um so it's bourbon to begin with, then sherry at 46% ABV. Uh, oh, there also sherry cast, to be precise. Offers a bit of a tasting notes there as well. I don't want to read them in case it influences me. But as you can see, this is the first time we're opening this. So, what about noise? Got my grand can glass. Let's pour a little uh, ton of rum here on a Monday morning. Afternoon. I don't know what time it is. Okay, oh yeah, definitely aromas are coming back now. This is good. I've been doing the Ray and Nephew test and um, it's the only way I could tell it if it came back or not. First thing I pick it up is actually quite a, a wet oak, wet sherry notes to this. Heavily seasoned, but actually quite fragrant at the same time. There's something else there as well. I want to say it's it's papaya. Am I getting papaya? Should I be getting papaya? I'm definitely a bit of guava. I, it's actually quite a tropical note to this. You get more of the seasoned aromas of the sherry as you'd expect. There's a real heavy note to this. Yet there's some tropical juices in there as well. That's interesting. It's a beautiful colour. So, let's give it a taste. 46, I read? Yeah, 46%. This is a good start for a Monday. Oh. Oh, wow, it really bursts. Wow. Oh, and it's still going. Incredibly mouth-watering. You got notes of sherry, as you'd expect, to be fair. There's a bit of cherry in there. There's a bit of, um, oh, like, soaked raisins. Oh, wow. It's incredibly mouth-watering. I'm trying not to dribble. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that'll be embarrassing. The molasses comes through quite nicely as well. 
moment underlining, but it's really, it's really pairing up nicely. The sherry is there for sure, but you get the molasses, you get that beautiful balance and you get the raisins coming through. And it's sort of a, I can't think of my words. It's kind of like a, a rounded approach to this. Everything's coming from different angles. It's not a mid-tongue, it's not the back, it's not the sides, it's everything, which I think is offered that mouth-watering profile. There is something... Oh, hello. Right, the aromas have got a little bit more on the um, on the drier side now. Mm. That's good. What I said it was 46%. He has the strength, but I mean, to be fair, I think it needed it to really sort of emphasize that sherry note. Anything less than that, you know, heading to 42, 40%, you probably start to dull it down a bit more. I think they've done well on that one. Done really well. I'm not a massive, I, I like sherry, but I like the Pedro Jimenez, the PX. There's not many rums that would use that. Oloroso is quite a, an industry standard, dare I say. But this is probably one of the better sherry cast finish rums I've come across. Can't think of any others off the top of my head, to be brutally honest, but there are some out there. Um, I'm a massive fan of, the, of whiskey finishes like this as well. But this is very different. This is a lot more bolder. I wouldn't say richer, but I definitely get a lot more intensity with it in a nice way as well. All right, that's a good start. So let's head on to port because I'm a huge fan of port. Now, again, small batch, non chill filtered, limited release of five year olds, which is the same age as the sherry. Uh, same ABV at 46%, bourbon, and of course, port finish. Uh, again, batch number two. Very nice. Um. Just seeing if there's anything else that's different. Oh, here we go. So, uh, Antigua rum aged for a minimum of five years in bourbon barrels and finished in a 200-year-old port barrel from the prestigious Royal Oporto Company of Porto, giving it an extraordinary... Oh, tasting notes. Don't want to get influenced. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but uh, I'd like to see what it's like before I know what to expect. Okay, again, a bottle I've never had opened just till right now. Got my spare glass. Healthy measures, because you want to embrace it, as I'm sure you all will at Manchester Rum Festival. If you haven't got your tickets, there's only a handful left, remember that. Okay, so 46% ABV again. So it's a good, um, I can smell this. A lot softer. I'm doing a comparison to the sherry, granted, but it's a lot softer. I was going to say dull. Dull's not the right word. I want to say it's not as mm, in your in, sort of in your nose straight away. It gradually gets into it. This is inviting. There's a little bit of um, vanilla, but there's also, what is that? There's a kind of, kind of caramelised banana. But not from a like a spice caramelized banana that you'd expect in such a profile. Okay, I'm intrigued by this. It's a heavier colour. It's amazing what the Oloroso sherry cask, uh, sorry, port cask can do in comparison to the sherry. A lot drier. Hell of a lot drier. There's still some. <laughs> There's still some intensity there. Still that boldness, still that kind of brash feel to it. Not as impactful in regards to it. it's not mouth watering. However, from the nose, I wasn't expecting it to do such. Smooth. You get a nice little kick at the back of your throat, but it's smooth. And you get some great flavours. The port does... Oh, hello. Here we go. The port's starting to shine through. Takes a little while. It's not an immediate hitter. 
But I tell you what, you're intrigued enough to give it another couple of sips and all of a sudden it starts to shine. There we are. Took a little longer than I expected, but we got there. And I wouldn't have said it was 46% either. I would have said this was a little bit less on a blind tasting. 44, 45, something like that. But you do get the port. Now, like I say, I love port. Oloroso. No, that's a minute. It's not Oloroso at all, is it? <laughs> Royal Oporto, Company of Porto. 200-year-old port barrel. I mean, that explains, in my mind, the colour. You get a, it, you do get that nice richness to this. You do get that sort of, um, what's the words? Uh, kind of a caramel silkiness towards it. That vanilla does come through. One vanilla pot, you kind of get that um, underlining of sugar. It's not sticky, but you know it's molasses based driven rum. And again, like the sherry cast finish, this is that beautiful balance between port, not as intense as the sherry, but to be fair, I wasn't expecting it because port in my mind is a lot deeper, richer, and sherry's a lot more florality towards it. But you also then get that balance between what rum, what Antiguan rum is all about, what English Harbour 10 year is as the base in my head. I know it's half of it, it's only five years, but you know the style of Antigua, and that is still there, which is very good. There's nothing worse in my mind. But if you're going to have, pardon me, a great base rum to then mask it with a finish of all things, and that's all you get, you might as well just call it a sherry rum or a port rum. So this is a good balance between the flavours. My favourite out of the two this morning would be the sherry, but I tell you what, I am drinking and finishing off the port cast first. That is a good shout. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm hoping that gives you a good idea what English Harbour Rum is all about. If you have not bought a ticket for Manchester Rum Festival, do head over to Roger's stand. Experience the uh, uh, bottles of Antiguan rum yourselves. Maybe you will come away with a new favourite. Uh, if you're intrigued enough before that, though, of course, please do check out their website, their social medias. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But also, of course... Uh, your local retailer, if you're here based in Manchester, maybe out, try out Tipples of Manchester or Aston's of Manchester. Uh, and of course, Master Malt, Whiskey Exchange, Drink Shop, Royal, um, Royal Mile Whiskies and such as well. Uh, until then, like I say, do keep an eye out for the other video that is going to uh, showcase what all of the Manchester Rum Festival is going to be partaking within. Uh, but until then, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all very, very soon for the next Rum on the Couch episode, which I guarantee you will not take six weeks. Until then, enjoy.